There's been some movement in the legislature to potentially restore the public charter school system the state Supreme Court invalidated in September. Can you tell me more about those efforts? Well, uh, by way of background, uh, the Washington State Supreme Court, as you mentioned, invalidated our charter school system out of concerns that charter schools derive their funding from the same uh, account, the same uh, uh, pool of funds as our uh, normal K-12 public schools. And so what we've done is I've co-sponsored uh, a bill, um, and as, uh, it's, it's a bipartisan bill uh, that uh, would al alleviate those concerns of the, of the court by drawing funds uh, from the Opportunity Pathways account, um, which is separate from the Common Schools account. Uh, that should, uh, again, uh, alleviate any concerns that the court has. Uh, th we've addressed all of those concerns that the court spelled out in its ruling, so hopefully that bill will go forward. Unfortunately, to date, uh, the chair of the House Education Committee um, has yet to schedule that bill for a hearing. Uh, and that's unfortunate because time's running out. We need to uh, continue our efforts to get that bell heard here down in Olympia. Education funding and the McCleary decision are front and center this legislative session. What's the latest on the legislature's efforts to address the K-12 fu education funding court case? Well, first of all, I want to emphasize that in the last two years, we have made historic progress in, uh, in funding our K-12 school system and uh, really upholding both the spirit and the intent of our paramount duty under the Constitution. For example, we've invested an additional $4.5 billion in K-12 uh, over the last three years, and that represents a 33% increase. Today, 48% of our general fund goes towards uh, our K-12 system, and that's, uh, that's never been done before uh, in the last uh, recent memory. So I think we've done some historic measures, and we've done it without a tax increase to the people of the state of Washington, which I think is significant. With respect to specific education uh, bills this session, uh, last, uh, Monday we had House Bill 2366 pass um, uh, the floor of the House uh, 6434. Uh, I was uh, in support of that measure. That bill establishes an edu education funding task force uh, to continue the McCleary work group uh, that would make recommendations to the legislature. Uh, it also directs the Washington State Institute for Public Policy to collect data on uh, really what is the extent of our reliance on local levies. Uh, that's a concern uh, under uh, McCleary is, is the state's over-reliance on local levies for teacher salaries. Uh, we need to, to collect data uh, on that and what's the scope of the problem and the breadth of the problem so that we can make some corrective uh, legislation, legislative uh, uh, measures in the 2017 um, session. And that's the final aspect of that bill, directs the legislature to, um, to, to correct that over-reliance on local levies in, during the 2017 uh, session. The, the court in McCleary gave the legislature until 2018 to address these problems. And so I think 2366, House Bill 2366, uh, uh, is another step in that progress that we're making towards uh, fulfilling our obligations under the McCleary decision and ensuring that our kids have access to a world-class education here in Washington State. During floor action this week, there was an effort by House Republicans to bring a constitutional amendment for two-thirds vote of the legislature to raise taxes to the House floor. Can you tell me more about this? Well, um, as you know, uh, uh, in the last so the last 20 years, voters of the state of the people of the state of Washington have uh, have indicated and voted six times that they uh, want a supermajority two-thirds requirement for tax increases uh, in the legislature. Most recently, the voters passed I-1366 uh, last November. Uh, that was a 51. Uh, 51.52% uh, margin approval rating. So, uh, even though um, you know statewide it was it was almost 52%. Regardless, the voters, a majority of the voters who voted in November, said they want again they want a two-thirds majority to raise taxes. Uh, what uh, the House Republican Caucus did on Monday was uh, we attempted a procedural uh, move to bring a bill to the floor that I have co-sponsored and along with my uh, colleagues here in the House Republican Caucus that would require a constitutional amendment to the voters to um, uh, enact a two-thirds requirement to raise taxes. Unfortunately, that measure failed on a procedural vote. It was a party line vote, 48 to 49. 
Um, but again, we are going to continue in our efforts to try to effectuate the will of the voters, uh, the will of the majority of the people of the state of Washington, and bring forward measures that would require a supermajority, two-thirds vote of the, of the legislature in order to raise taxes. Six times the voters have spoken, and unfortunately, um, our, our colleagues on the other side of the aisle have blocked those measures uh, uh, recently, but we're going to continue our efforts to do so.